Uh, on the record this morning, we are here in the matter of the petition for reinstatement of John uh, Wogus, um, and this is an agency case number 900-2018-000161, and it is the Office of Administrative Hearings case number 2018-110832. We have a large binder before us. Um, we have done introductions, and our court reporter is going to insert those into this uh, record, so we don't need to do those again, uh, with the exception of uh, the petitioner in this case. Um, and I will assume that you're Mr. or Dr. Wogus. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. All right, very good. So you're probably going to have to get a little closer to the microphone um, when we have you uh, answering questions for us, and I appreciate that. So with all the introductions being the same, Mr. Gashett, I'll open the floor to you to help us with the binder of documents we have before us. Yes, Your Honor, and then when I explain the documents, I'll give a brief introduction to the facts. Um, many of the board members were on the board two years ago when uh, Mr. Wogus came to ask for reinstatement, so some of you will be familiar with these facts, but as a reminder, also for board members that are new. Um, okay, so Exhibit 1 is the decision and order in this case, and those pages 1 through 35. Um, exhibit 2, I'll highlight more than Exhibit 1 at this time. Um, as I was stating previously, Mr. Wogus made an a petition for reinstatement back on January 21st of 2016. At the time the board rejected um, that petition, uh, the factual findings as set forth in the board's decision uh, at that time in March of 2016 uh, pretty accurately sets forth everything that led to discipline and uh, basically what it involved. And so highlighting that in Exhibit 2, page 38, um, sets forth the original accusation that involved two patients, uh, patient JW and patient KP. Uh, there was inappropriate contact with patient KP in January of uh, 2002. Um, there was uh, allegations that he kissed that patient uh, while he was in the room with her in the exam room, asked her if that did anything for her, um, that he made an inappropriate comment and that he placed his, her hand on his crotch and asked, do you feel this, um, and that he had an erect penis at the time that occurred. Um, that was in the original accusation. Um, that conduct also, uh, or that accusation also alleged that JW was a patient, a female patient who appeared before him on May 8th of 2002. Um, she had recently had a history of surgery and uh, Vicodin dependency, and during the examination, she asked for Vicodin, and uh, the petitioner was looking at her stitches that were rubbing against her, el her underwear um, from her surgery. Um, he was commenting that she had a rose tattoo, uh, that she was a beautiful woman, that he liked women with tattoos. Um, he offered her a number to a local detoxification program, and then he offered her Vicodin. And to, in order to do that, he would have her go back to the Granite Bay office uh, that evening. So that was 10.30 in the morning. At approximately 10 o'clock that night, he met patient JW at uh, the Folsom Clinic and told her that in order to make sure she wasn't a police officer, that he wanted to check and make sure she wasn't wearing a wire, he had her strip and disrobe, including her underwear, um, which included, uh, and she, she objected, but she, he insisted if she wanted the drugs. And so he had her go naked, bend over, and then he began to inspect her body. And that included uh, touching her uh, on the, in the gluteal uh, cap of her butt crack, as well as placing his hands on the folds of her vagina. Um, during that, there was a description that he had locked the door and told her that she was going to have to comply. Uh, with his inspection. Um, and so after he touched the folds of the outside of her vagina, um, she got up, she said she wanted to leave, she said she didn't want the Vicodin anymore. He asked if he could kiss her. Um, she said no, he was apologetic. Um, and then uh, he, he, he eventually let her have the Vicodin without the kiss. Um, uh, actually, I take that back. He eventually did insist that he kiss kiss her, and then he forcibly kissed her um, after she dressed. She took off. She reported that to law enforcement. Um, 
On May 15th, which was approximately seven days later, there was a recorded phone call from the police that they listened into from patient JW back to um, the petitioner. And in that call, they discussed a lot of what had occurred on May 8th. They made, uh, he, he honestly acknowledged a, a lot of what occurred, um, stated that he was attracted to her uh, in a sexual way, um, that it could destroy his career, asked for her to come by and dance naked for him. After some discussion, he agreed to give her more Vicodin, uh, which was what her initial request was on May 8th. Uh, and he told her on the way to stop and buy some condoms on the way back to that, on the way back to the clinic. Um, he was arrested shortly thereafter, and that started the criminal proceedings. Um, there was also, in that decision and order at page, uh, let's see here, page 40, 39 and 40, additional allegations of additional patients, and, and those were in a psychological examination that was performed in 2003 by a Dr. Wilkenfield. Um, that was patient EW, uh, that she had felt that in May of 2001 she'd come in for medication and the petitioner had made inappropriate sexual comments towards her um, that, that, that she interpreted as basically coming on to her. Patient RB reported that uh, that the petitioner had told her he was attracted to her, and during an examination had asked uh, to take her shorts off so he could measure her hips. Um, and that occurred in uh, so, so about this time, in 2001. I, I don't have the specific date in the, in the decision, but it is in the actual documentation, and we'll, we'll get to that. And then May 1st, 2002, so approximately eight days before the visit with JW, a patient, TW, Asked petitioner for a Vicodin prescription for withdrawal symptoms. Petitioner instructed her to disrobe, lie down in the back of an examination table, and then while she was wearing her underwear, he squeezed her breasts and rubbed his open hand on her vagina through her underwear. And so those were additional patients uh, that were listed in that psychological report, um, and those are contained in the decision and order from 2016. TW, uh, four days later after that May 1st office visit, would have to try to attempt suicide, um, being depressed over what had occurred to her. Okay, um, there is notation in here that there was a criminal process involving this case. The uh, petitioner was convicted um, after a plea agreement and sentenced, and that's listed on page 41 under sentencing uh, back on August 22, 2003. He was placed on felony probation, uh, required to uh, do work for a low uh, for a jail sentence, have no contact with the victims, and register as a 290 registrant. The, the charge he was convicted of was too, so I'm talking too fast. The charge he was convicted of was 243.4, sexual battery. Um, that was later reduced, and that's covered in the decision and order uh, at page 42. Um, that conviction was reduced to a misdemeanor in 2006, and his probation was terminated and his plea, uh, his conviction was dismissed pursuant to Penal Code 1203.4. Um, he also obtained a certificate of rehabilitation, and that's on page 43, uh, where that charge, even as a misdemeanor, uh, was actually uh, withdrawn from his record. Certificate of rehabilitation was granted under 4852.15 which also allowed him to no longer be a 290 registrant. Gosh, it slow down. I will. Um, so that's, that's the decision and order from uh, 2016, and those are the highlights of kind of where we're at and where this petitioner is at. Okay, Exhibit 3 is the notice of hearing in this matter. Exhibit 4 is a certificate of non-licensure showing that at this time petitioner's license has been revoked pursuant to a stipulated surrender. <coughs> Exhibit 5 is his current petition for reinstatement. Exhibit 6 is the petitioner's narrative statement connected to that petition dated March 16th 2018. Exhibit 7 are two letters of recommendation from doctors of osteopathic medicine 
The first is John Tellerico, T-A-L-A-R-I-C-O, October 6, 2015. The second is a letter that we've also added as an insert for your binder, um, and that's a letter from Glenn Thiel. When we went through the copying process and the bait stamping process, the letter that was bait stamped is, is illegible, but the copy that is the insert is a little more legible, and you can read that. And that's spelling is T H I E L, and that's dated August 21st, 2015. Mr. Gashett, you said that's an insert. I have a different letter as an insert. Uh, we, we should have two. Um, there should be one. I think in the binders, my understanding with talking with the analyst is that he had took the field letter and actually just slid it back in behind Exhibit 7. And so that's where everyone should have that. So you'll see the poorly copied one or the one that was uh, uh, illegible. And then the second one is there legible. Thank you. All right. Exhibit 8 in the packet, pages 63 to 151, are continuing education credits. Exhibit 9, page 152 to 165, are the certified documents from Sacramento Superior Court. And once again, that, that sets forth the certificate of rehabilitation, the 1203.4 dismissal, the original underlying conviction documents, uh, and, and the original conviction. Exhibit 10. I'm sorry if I may interrupt, Council. Just, just as a point of housekeeping, in Exhibit 9, there's some Social Security numbers. I think we should probably black those out. I saw them on um, AGO 153 and 54. All right, I see those both at yeah. the top, and um, those are uh, Mr. Wogus's Social Security numbers. So what I will do is I'll redact those out of the official copy. Um, and then, um, Mr. Turner, would you prefer at that point that I collect uh, those two pages from all of the board members after the closed session? That's fine. All right, I will do that. And maybe more than two pages, I think. Yeah, those are the ones that I just saw, so they may be here. Let me ask you this, Mr. Turner, um, would you have any objection that as I review this file and writing the decision on behalf of the board that if I discover any further uh, personal or private information that, that I redact that out of the official copy? Yeah, no objection. All right, very good, I will do that. Mr. Moreno, thank you for that. Mr. Gashett, we're ready for you when you're ready. Yes, Your Honor. And I appreciate that. I, it appears that when I was redacting these documents, I just missed those as they were uh, uh, government documents I didn't think would have those kinds of information on them. But I appreciate that from the, the board. And, and that was my intent to redact any of that information as well. OK. Um, exhibit 10 is the curriculum vitae of petitioner John Wilkes. Exhibit 11 are various letters of support. I have not listed them all out, um, but they do run pages 169 to 253. Exhibit 12 is a letter from Joelle Calton, a clinical psychologist who has been seeing uh, the petitioner for psychotherapy, and that's pages 254 to 255. Exhibit 13 
are certificates of completion for professional boundaries classes completed by the petitioner and those are pages 256 to 261 exhibit 14 and that's pages 262 to 279 our petitioners work performance reports and employee employment awards um, from the state of California where he currently works exhibit 15 which is pages 280 to 332 are various employment accomplishments that were provided by the petitioner at his current employment um, where he works for the state of California. Exhibit 16, pages 333 to 347, are documents uh, including volunteer activities by the petitioner. Exhibit 17 is the report of investigation that was performed when uh, Mr. Wogus first asked for his petition for reinstatement and I've re-included that, that document here because it includes an interview with one of the uh, alleged patients or one of the patients that were in the initial uh, reason for discipline and that's pages uh, 348 to 363. Exhibit 18 are Sacramento Superior Court documents, um, specifically the police report involving patient JW, pages 364 to 371, including her initial statement and then also the uh, phone call that law enforcement monitored. Exhibit 19 is a declaration of Detective Brian Sather, setting forth the allegations made by patient JW, and that's pages 372 to 376. Exhibit 20 is a news release on petitioner's arrest and the enforcement documents, 377 to 381. Exhibit 21 is the original underlying division of investigation report performed by the Health Quality Enforcement Unit, 2002-05-0511, uh, setting forth the statements of patients KP and EW uh, 